What's up guys, back to another kind of super video. In today's video, we are going to talk about the Overlord reroll tier list. This video is made at the very end of February going into March. So if you're watching this at any other time, do note that there could be better characters out at the time or there could be a limited banner out at the time that would be better to reroll on and just, you know, better characters in general. So do keep that in mind. I normally update these every major celebration slash, um like a collab is coming out so hopefully you know if you're in the future and there's something important coming out or about to be out i'll probably have another one up but anyway let's get into it top of the top is made Leah. she is pretty much a must-have for any re-roller she has red shred which we'll get into that in a minute she has really good ults that have a lot of survivability and a lot of good support and she does pretty good damage as well Netting her the top of the list. Then in amazing tier, we have Ainz and Shaltair, two collab units. They're both really good. They're going to be meta in their element for a good chunk for Ainz and not as much Shaltair, but she's still good nonetheless. And she's limited. The collab characters cannot be gotten any other time. So do keep that in mind. Then we have Ainumiya, Yakta Yinyin, and then the casual and Kempo Mitsurugis. So Ainumiya and Mitsurugi both have debuff block, which pretty much means if you're going to get your attack lowered or your magic lowered, they stop it. So very good in arenas with attack lowering or whatever it may be. Then we have the Yun Yun, very good in dark. In fact, if you pull Leah, Ainz, and Yun Yun, you're off to an extremely good start right then and there. Pretty much she's just going to be paired with Ainz. She has cooldown reduction, which is going to help Ainz use his skills more and therefore get his ult faster because he has a 20% boost to the party's ult gauge and then Mitsurugi at the end also has ult gauge up so that's nice then we have collab and the res party trait and um elemental buff tiers the reason these tiers are here is because one the collab units don't come back I know it says in the text that these collabs could come back or you know they could come back at a later date no collab has come back on jp so i don't expect these to ever ever come back that's why i think that when re-rolling you have to keep that in mind if you're not a collector then this means less to you but if you are a collector keep that in mind re-rolling you probably want to grab at the collab characters however darkness cosmo and megami aren't that great so they're not good for re-rolling for you know a good account they're just there for collection then onto the Red Shred, Party Trait, and Elemental Buffers. These are all in the same tier for me because it's pretty much just ways your teams get better in Arena. They're not used too much besides the, um, well, the Red Shred units aren't used for story too much. You could get away with using the Party Traits or Elemental Buffers if your team, you know, goes for that just because they're more generally used. The rest red units only make the weakness do more damage. So if you're fighting someone who's weak to water and you're using, let's say, Melissa, who's earth, she can make the, them more weak to water, but her herself's not doing more damage. So you have to keep that in mind with these units. But for arena, which is all one type, very good. The rest red units are, ironically enough, made Leah is there, but she's up top on the list. But they are Mel slash Mira, whatever you want to call her. Chris and Melissa, the party trait, which pretty much with these units on the team, they give you an extra option. Instead of doing physical or magical up, you can do a elemental buff, such as veneer boosts all earth damage, which gives a higher percentage and is normally more accessible than just doing physical or magical. If you have to do split or one person's ult's magical and their rest of their skill set is physical, whatever it may be. Cosmo is fire, Melissa is wind, Miru is light and then at the very end is casual leah she does a boost to your elemental damage pretty much thinking of it as red shred but the buff goes to your character so your character does more damage instead of the enemy getting the debuff and taking more damage but unless those are those characters now we get down to the more generalized tiers so for these ones let me scroll down so you can see all of them um I'll scroll down a little bit. Let me go over the bad fake four star tiers real quick. So the bad and fake four stars are loaded with characters who either aren't good character wise, such as Dust or Amy, to characters who 
just don't have a good skill set such as like OG Aqua or the Spa slash Onsen Aqua to other characters who just have wonky kits like the OG Cosma and the PJ Cielo. These are units that you won't ever use. Funny enough, the bad units also fit into the same category of there's just way better characters. In fact, even units into won't use much have characters who are better as three stars and you can get those for free or through summons. There's a few in won't use much that you could use, such as like OG Leah or OG Cielo, but they're just outclassed by just better characters in the higher tiers. Some of them are outclassed by legendary units such as legendary Aqua, you know, whatever it may be, or some units are just in the wrong element slash their physical or magical. Uh, you're not going to see much use out of Theodore Aru, which is this R right here, because we're switching over to physical um, light users with Shaltier for a little bit. So do the human that mind. She could go up later, obviously, but at the time, some units are just not that good because the meta team is the other type of attack. Now going back up to OKish okay and good. These units are units that you're pretty much going to pull. And if they're in the good tier, you're probably going to use them on your teams a lot. Uh, PJ Mia which is the only Mia in this, the good tier, is really good for story because she boosts Gage and heals you, and she has a slow ult, so you don't get hit as much. Other characters are you're probably going to be using in Arena, such as Iris is pretty good in Arenas. Um, I know that Cosma can be used in OKish okay tier in Arena as well. I have used Yunyun um, in Arena before. I've used the Chris and Lightning Arena, all this stuff. These are just the general, if you get them, good, but they're not crazy must reroll for units. So while you're rerolling and you're going for, let's say, your made the Ein's Union account, right? If you grab a couple of these units, that'll be pretty good. So you can start to make a good arena team slash just any team to fight whatever it may be as if there's an event week to fire. If you pull Komeko in, um, you know, for fire, that'd be pretty good. Of course, there is something I do have to mention. These two and this Megumi. So I guess the first three in the slot. The reason they're in good is because Komeko's pretty good. I scored pretty highly, and I don't really take Arena seriously with her with legendary Megumi because there's a Crypto Demon buff. And then the other two Megumis. I think the fire one is still pretty good. And the Wind one, which is the other Megami, the Cafe one, she has a par not a party trait, sorry, an EX trait where she boosts whoever she's under because there's two sub slots, boost magic. And that'll just be a overall good Megami for whatever Megami you're using because most of them, such as the water one down here, is using water attacks and switches over to her fire ult. So this Megami would help her with both. Normally, I wouldn't put a character that high up because of, you know, those kind of traits. But since Megami is used pretty much in almost every arena and, you know, I wouldn't say every arena, but a lot of arenas, people still use her and she still can find success. I'd say she's you know, pretty OK to put in there. I actually, I think I will move her down to OK -ish just because she's not really used on her own team, just as a good substrate. But you could. You get the gist of it, right? But other than that, that's pretty much, I'm pretty confident in where I ranked everybody. If you have any questions, let me know, of course. Um, of course, there's always gonna be people who say, actually, I think uh, this yellow should be in amazing tier or whatever it may be. Obviously, I could sit here and probably nitpick at it for hours and be like, actually, maybe I think that this character is good or maybe I think this character won't, be, won't move much. I just went over generally what I see people use or what I use myself or what I found success using in the past couple arenas. Obviously, I cut it off. I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, I used, um, you know, OG Leah like half a year ago. Obviously, she's still good. <laughs> but units I've used and seen success with, I put up higher, obviously. Well, that, that'll be it for the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more kind of super content. And I'll catch you all in the next kind of super video. Thanks for watching.